In engineering, you will often encounter formulas containing a lot of quantities. Take, for example, the equation of motion for a mass on a spring. Mass times acceleration equals minus k times displacement minus c times velocity. In such equations, however, often a number of these quantities will be taken constant. In the case from the mass on the spring, it will probably be the mass k and c. However, some of the other quantities are also related to each other. Acceleration equals v prime and v equals x prime. So that in the end there is only one truly independent quantity. If you know the displacement x as a function of time, you can find all the other quantities. So in engineering problems it is often important to ask yourself how many truly independent quantities do I have? Because often many quantities are interrelated. In linear algebra we also have this notion of independence for factors. How many truly different independent factors do I have in a set? And which factors can I make using the other ones? Fortunately, this question is much easier in linear algebra than in some applied engineering problems. In the latter, the relations may be hard to spot. So in this web lecture, you will learn what we mean by independence in the linear algebra setting and what we mean by dependence relation. Let us look at an example as at this picture. We see that the factor u3 over here can also be written as the sum of u1 and u2. So u3 in a sense depends on u1 and u2 because u3 equals u1 plus u2. However, you can also solve for u1 and then you see u1 equals u3 minus u2. So you can also say that u1 depends on u2 and u3. So we say that one factor depends on another, let's say u3 depends on u1 and u2, if u3 is a linear combination of u1 and u2. However, this is a very impractical, because if u3 depends on u1 and u2, maybe u1 depends on u2 and u3, etc., etc. So, say, so stating dependence of a factor on others, that's not so convenient. So we often define dependence of a set of factors. So what do we mean by that? A set containing n factors, u1 up to u n, is said to be dependent if at least one of the members is in a combination of the other members. And that's the theorem. So why is this a theorem and not a definition yet? Well, as you might see from the, the theorem, it might be inconvenient to use this as a definition. Because if you want to check this in practice, you would have to go through all elements of the set in order to find whether one of them is dependent on all the others. So that's quite uh, a, a, a bit of work. So the definition of linear independence is slightly different. That sets a set S containing the factors u1 up to un is called linearly independent if the trivial solution is the only solution of this equation over here. C1 u1 plus C2 u2 up to Cn un equals zero. That's not definition. What does it have to do with linear combinations? Okay, it's clear that you can check rather easily in this way whether set is independent or not. Just you just have to uh, solve one vector equation and you have to see whether you have only a solution or whether you have also non-trivial solutions. That's a nice definition to work with. But what does it have to do with the theorem, with the uh, geometric idea behind this? Well, suppose uh, one vector, say u1, is a linear combination of two other vectors. So we have a set of three vectors. Then we can see that this is the case, uh, then the theorem also tells us that the set is dependent. Well, why is that? You can bring the u1 to the other side, and then we have this equation over here. And then we see that the equation c1 u1 plus c2 u2 plus c3 u3 equals zero also has a non-trivial solution. Uh, because you can put c1 to minus 1, and then you have the c2 and c3. So you see that if one factor is a linear combination of some other factors, then the a uh, factor equation over here automatically has a non-trivial solution, which means that also in the sense of the definition the set is dependent. Now let's look at it the other way. Suppose our set is dependent in the sense of the definition, so this equation over here has a non-trivial solution. 
down one of the C, uh, one of the three C's she wants you to or three C or all of them, but at least one of them is non-zero. So suppose, for example, that it is C1. Well, if C1 is non-zero, then you can divide by it and solve for U1. And you see that U1 is a linear combination of U2 and U3. So if a set is uh, dependent according to the definition, then you see that you can express one of its members as a member of the others, which is a statement according to the theorem. So now you see what independence is. You have the rather abstract def uh, definition, uh, which is convenient uh, if you want to check this for a, a given set. And also uh, we have the idea which is given by the theorem, which tells you what it actually means.